Hello people, in this video we want to look at herpes simplex keratitis that is inflammation of the cornea which is caused by this virus that is herpes simplex virus. Okay, so in this basically you will see something called as dendritic ulcer. So dendritic ulcer is caused by what? In her by herpes simplex virus. So under herpes, you have herpes simplex virus, you have herpes zoster virus, so many types of herpes virus are there. But we are looking at herpes simplex virus, which uh, the, uh, what it uh, is causing, okay. So this uh, herpes simplex virus, what is it? It's natural host is man. And in herpes simplex virus, you have two types, okay, herpes simplex 1 and herpes simplex 2. Herpes simplex 1, usually above the waist um, issues it will cause, right. And uh, herpes simplex uh, virus 2 will cause uh, genitalia and other uh, issues. But the thing with this uh, herpes simplex virus 2 sometimes can cause ocular issues also. What will you talk about here? You will say mainly herpes simplex virus 1. It is a DNA virus. Okay. Mode of infection, uh, HSV1, so it affects above the waist, you know, all the lips, labias and all. So by kissing, so people kissing can get this uh, infection. Herpes simplex 2, uh, how will it affect the eye? Because uh, from a mother to a neonate, it can go, okay. O what are the ocular lesions that herpes simplex uh, can cause? See, herpes simplex can affect the conjunctiva. So it will cause conjunctivitis, it can affect the cornea, it can affect the iris, etc. So, what and all it can cause? Conjunctivitis in that you have already looked at herpes uh, conjunctivitis, right? Herpes simplex conjunctivitis you have already seen, right? So, you should have seen this conjunctivitis even in ophthalmia neonatorum because it can affect neonates also. Here in this video, what are we more uh, focused on? We are focused on the cornea. So, cornea layer by layer they are going, guys. So, they are telling if this is cornea, look at this. Okay, so if this is the cornea and it has so many layers, right? It has the epithelium, it has the endothelium, then it has the stroma in the middle, let us say. There are some other membranes, but remember, epithelium, if it is affecting epithelium, they have some names and they have some separate treatment for that. And if it is affecting cornea, sorry, stroma, then uh, se separate names there and separate treatment. So, it is very detailed in this one, okay? And uh, there is something called as primary herpes. Primary means the first time the person is getting an infection. There they are talking about conjunctivitis and cornea. The epithelium is affected. Mostly the epithelium is affected, right? Now when it is recurrent, again and again this guy is getting uh, herpes uh, simplex. Then here epithelium is affected. Stroma is affected, right? There are so many other terminologies here called metaherpetic. Uh, uh, then finally they are talking about iridocyclitis where it is affecting the iris, etc. <clears throat> right so there is a lot here to understand did you get that so layer by layer they are going into the eye okay here we are not looking at the conjunctivitis we are looking only at the cornea cornea part right look at the cornea uh, problems so this primary herpes <clears throat> the first time somebody gets so it is like a, a, a person who is like children from 6 months to 5 years of age to teenage right they can get okay this is uh, because of uh, direct contact of this uh, secretions, etc. Here, what and all will be there? Some uh, systemic features will be there, guys, like uh, fever. Fever will be there. Malais. Non uh, this is virus, right? So, there won't be any pus and all. Non-superative lymphadenopathy. Okay. So, so many things. Fever and all you remember, okay? Skin also will be affected, right? Uh, lips and all that. There you saw that, right? Where is that? So, lips will be affected. <clears throat> what else can be affected? Periorbital region, lid margin, vesicular blepharitis, all that can happen. So, what and all you should know here. Let's just make a box here. What and all are they telling? Young people are affected, right? Then, fever, etc. Fever, malice, etc. Then, skin. What and all is affected? Lips, lid margin, periorbital region is affected, lids are affected, right? What are they talking about here? Vesicular blepharitis, okay? Now coming to ocular lesions, what and all ocular lesions will be there? There will be follicular conjunctivitis, acute follicular conjunctivitis will be there. So we kind of have put it here again properly. Primary herpes, uh, it's the first attack of this herpes simplex virus. Young people will see this. 
uh, fever etc will be there systemic uh, things then uh, skin lesions uh, lips periorbital lid margin vesicular blepharitis conjunctiva they will have what conjunctivitis <clears throat> this will there be there will be lymph adenitis in this okay lymph adenitis okay then coming to cornea so in this video we are more uh, focused on the cornea right so what will happen to the cornea let's see under cornea mainly the epithelium is affected right so what you will you see here this is the first time so only epithelium it is not going deep inside so you can see here uh, what in all other words here fine epithelial punctate keratitis coarse epithelial punctate keratitis just remember epithelial punctate keratitis dendritic ulcers also can be there in primary herpes okay so dendritic ulcer actually can be there in primary and in recurrent so what why recurrent because the virus what it did this herpes virus uh, after the primary infection self limiting it will go but it will go and land up in the trigeminal ganglion now what will happen when this person becomes a little immunocompromised or this virus becomes strong it is coming out and causing a recurrent herpes the uh, that is why recurrent herpes okay so now you have understood uh, a recurrent herpes how it happens right but here what in recurrent herpes you have to see is there are many terminologies the epithelium is affected the stroma is affected so many things the finally they are writing about iridocyclitis which they will cover probably in a different section because here we want to look at only the cornea so only cornea means uh, epithelial keratitis uh, uh, stromal keratitis and trophic keratitis okay this much we should know now what what else we should talk about so they are saying that this will be unilateral okay and when will this virus come out from the trigeminal ganglion basically when people have um, fever okay or they are exposed to uv rays or they are generally ill if they are emotionally or physically exhausted wow right or if they had some trauma some mild trauma is enough it will come out and it will start enjoying life mild trauma or uh, menstrual stress then if they are putting some steroids so obviously they are compromising their immune so they will be immuno immunosuppressed so what will happen these will be the triggers for the attack so the virus which was happily sitting in a latent uh, form now is coming and attacking right so you are able to understand this recurrent herpes overall just look at this epithelial they are talking about uh, punctate epithelial keratitis dendritic ulcer geographical ulcer all these three are where in the epithelium epithelium is affected punctate epithelial dendritic ulcer geographical ulcer see in the primary herpes you already saw this punctate and dendritic here one more extra geographical so it is going to go one more level and become like a map big one geographical ulcer okay this is punctate epithelial keratitis dendritic ulcer will see it so for three images for this uh, three things punctate epithelial keratitis dendritic ulcer like uh, tree and all that geographical ulcer is really big like a map right so these three things you have understood so it will start getting a little complicated because each of these features we will look at each of these treatment we have to look at okay look at the uh, things that will happen in this there will be redness pain photophobia tearing decreased vision obviously right cornea is affected everything about the eye same symptoms you will write photophobia redness decreased vision same things punctate you will see what punctate lesions okay this next step is what dendritic ulcer here you will see what irregular zigzag linear branching and these branches are generally knobbed at the end maybe they mean these dots they are knobbed at the end and they these will stain with fluorescein the floor of the ulcer the floor of the ulcer stains with fluorescein and the virus laden cells at the margin take up rose bengal so they have some two stains they are talking about here <clears throat> right so what in all they are talking about this dendritic ulcer so let's just add that here in dendritic ulcer what are they saying branches knobbed at end then floor of ulcer 
stains with fluorescein and then the virus laden cells at the margin <clears throat> take up rose bengal okay so that is what they are telling here so currently what are we looking at the dendritic ulcer right this can be the reason the primary and recurrent recurrent you can remember more i think because this is these the details they are telling mostly for recurrent herpes okay there is a marked diminution of corneal sensations so there is a marked diminution of corneal sensation this is very important they can't feel anything they can't feel much in the cornea so there is another thing you should not give steroids because if you give steroids <clears throat> it will flare up obviously it's a viral thing right and uh, geographical it can go on to become a geographical ulcer okay so next let's move on to geographical ulcer so geographical ulcer you saw here it definitely looks like a map right and this is a geographical ulcer they have shown here so these uh, what else you want to see amoeboid configuration also they are telling here that's it they are not seeing much they are saying it will be amoeboid that's it that's it guys so we have completed the epithelial part of recurrent herpes but still we have to go for the treatment of the epithelial part so if epithelium is affected how will you treat look at the treatment for epithelial keratitis we are not talking only about the epithelium if it is affected so they are talking about acyclovir what spelling is this? c i c a cyclovir they are talking about then they are talking about fami fam cyclovir all cyclovirs vala cyclovir fam cyclovir a cyclovir all these are antivirals basically right and they are talking about mechanical debridement systemic also they are giving antivirals non specific supportive therapy every time you will give what will you give non specific to reduce pain they talk about some cycloplegics right then paracetamol then vitamins so the same non specific therapy fine now let us move on guys now so in this recurrent herpes keratitis herpes uh, simplex keratitis now the stroma got involved let's say now what happens if the stroma gets involved so if the stroma gets involved you have something called as disc c form keratitis disc disky form disky form keratitis okay so basically they are saying this happens because of delayed hypersensitivity reaction they are talking about endothelial damage also so they are saying this delayed this is delayed hypersensitivity delayed hypersensitivity basically the endothelium was responsible for maintaining all the transparency you know that right so if you remember the cornea layers here you have the epithelium here you have the endothelium the endothelium is responsible for all the transparency so it is pumping out everything that it doesn't need so that this place will be clear and it will allow light nicely inside right so endothelium is very important but here what they are saying is the endothelium itself is damaged so what happens there will be edema which was not supposed to be there it was pumping out all the water remember so there will be stromal edema so there will be stromal keratitis disky form keratitis so this is the photo they have in the textbook disky form keratitis in this they are saying you can give steroids they are telling in this the epithelium will be intact and there can be folds in decimet decimet's membrane i'm sure all the edema will make all these folds what do you say so what are they saying <clears throat> the epithelium is intact the stroma is having full edema the decimet's membrane is going to have folds endothelium is totally damaged because of the endothelium damage only all this is affected now okay then um, they are telling there will be a ring of stromal infiltrate they are having a specific word here wesley wesley immune ring heard this somewhere right wesley immune ring nice 
So, a lot of things they are talking about here. Keratic precipitates uh, around the, uh, around, what is this? Keratic precipitates under the round area of stromal edema. So, some keratic precipitates, all this they are talking about stroma. Ring of stromal infiltrate, vesely immune ring. This is where the antigen meets the antibody. Okay, or the antibody has gone there to meet. What do you see? Corneal sensations are diminished in this also. Okay. Corneal sensations are diminished. Then, intraocular pressure may be raised despite only mild anterior uveitis. Intraocular pressure may be raised. Okay. They are saying here this keratic precipitates and this uh, corneal sensations being diminished. These are very uh, crucial for diagnosis. Like we already told you, in this case they can give steroids. Then you have diffuse stromal necrotic keratitis. Diffuse means everywhere, right? So this one they are saying it is a type of interstitial keratitis. Viral invasion will be there. Tissue destruction will be there. So necrotic you can remember. Again here same words only. Keratic precipitates, corneal lesions, but necrotic word they are using. Mild iritis. Stromal vascularization, so they, that is not a good thing, right? <clears throat> Cornea is avascular, stroma is now can get vascularization. Treat with antivirals only. Read this more from the textbook, guys. So actually, they are using some word called as herpetic keratouveitis, etc. Okay. So, um, the only place they are saying you can give steroids is this uh, disky form keratitis. Everywhere else, they are talking about antivirals. So, if you remember, this is antiviral. Then in uh, epithelial keratitis, so they spoke only about uh, antivirals, right? Keratoplasty, they are saying you delay it. See, basically this is completely necrotic. So, I am thinking they are thinking about replacing the cornea. But they are saying you want to replace the cornea, okay, but delay the keratoplasty. Because even the new cornea which you give, right, that might get attacked again, right? This is a recurrent condition. Remember, this is a recurrent herpes. Guys, in this um, recurrent, you know, now you have seen uh, epithelial, then you saw stromal. Now, let us look at another terminology, trophic keratitis. Here, they are talking about epithelium only again. Again, they are talking about epithelium only. But here, they are saying that this is a sterile condition, not an active viral uh, problem. Here, they are saying that mechanical healing problem due to persistent defects in the basement membrane of the corneal epithelium. So, if you go to the corneal epithelium here, we are back to the epithelium. They are saying some uh, basement membrane core persistent defects because of healing problem. There can be this trophic keratitis. So, in this, as you know, it is uh, something to do with the epithelium and it is not viral. They are telling you just give that person lubricants, artificial tears, then uh, bandage soft contact lens, lid closure, okay, to promote healing maybe, lid closure. Because epithelium only is affected, nothing to do with virus, right? Here they are, they are saying it is not, it is sterile. It is sterile. Not an active viral disease. Here they are talking about some terminology that indolent linear ovoid epithelial defect. What is this indolent? Indolent means lazy looks like. Lazy epithelial defect. Okay, so after this, what else will be there in recurrent uh, herpes, uh, keratitis, uh, you can have herpetic iridocyclitis. But here we are concerned only with cornea. So we are not looking at this one now. Her recurrent herpes simplex keratitis. <clears throat> Iris and all affected, not looking at it now. So where will you see dendritic ulcers? Herpes simplex keratitis. Where will you see pseudodendrites? Pseudodendrites you will see in herpes zoster, acanth amoeba, keratitis, pseudodendrites you will see there. Okay. Herpes zoster actually they are saying it is microdendritic. They are explaining that it, this will be more peripheral and stellate. So you can differentiate. Okay. It will be peripheral. Which will be peripheral? Herpes zoster. It will be peripheral they are saying. Let's take a quick recap. We started off with herpes simplex, keratitis, dendritic ulcer we wanted to look at. So basically it is because of human, uh, what is this, human herpes virus 1, 2, 
<clears throat> that is nothing but simplex herpes simplex minus dna virus so natural host is man uh, it is how do you get the infection kissing close contact with people mother to a neonate ocular lesions in primary attack usually will be only the epithelium will be involved there can be conjunctivitis epithelium can be involved what will be there epithelial punctate keratitis dendritic ulcer don't forget then what will happen this will become latent infection the virus will go and sit in trigeminal ganglion then whenever this person uh, falls ill uh, has fever has some uv rays exposure some emotional physically exhausted <clears throat> has some trauma some stress some steroids this person is taking the virus will neatly come out and create a recurrent herpes this is usually a unilateral condition so this recurrent herpes goes from epithelium into the stroma so many things it can affect if it is affecting epithelium there can be punctate epithelial keratitis which you saw here then dendritic ulcer which you saw here it is it stains with fluorescein and the virus laden cells take up rose bengal there is diminution of corneal sensation don't give steroids in this otherwise it will become what geographical ulcer which is amoeboid treatment will be uh, antivirals acyclovir fam cyclovir valacyclovir then you can do mechanical debridement non specific care you will anyways give okay don't give steroids then coming to recurrent when it is becoming recurrent it can affect the yeah same thing recurrent we are continuing with recurrent we saw epithelial now stromal if it is affecting stroma you have disky form keratitis there you will have edema stromal edema keratic precipitates some vesely immune ring where antigen meets antibody <clears throat> corneal sensations are diminished here also there can be uh, raised intraocular pressure some anterior uveitis also they were speaking about in this you can give steroids only in this but you should be able to differentiate because of the keratic precipitate precipitates etc diffuse stromal necrotic keratitis here also you will give antivirals necrotic and then you might think about keratoplasty but you have to delay it till you're sure trophic keratitis metaherpetic here there is not no viral uh, problem the mechanical healing problem so you will bandage right the eye so bandage soft contact lens lid closure tarsorefi artificial tears lubricants then herpetic iridocyclitis we are not looking at this now then uh, pseudodendrites where will you find uh, pseudodendrites you'll see in her these also that is microdendrites then acanthamoeba contact lens users you will see all that that's all for now in this video bye bye so in this video remember we have looked only at simplex we have not looked at herpes zoster for herpes zoster uh, maybe in a different video okay so in this video only herpes simplex keratitis we have seen